Hi, I'm Ken with BC Wood. Thank you for joining this recorded webinar from Wood Talks at the Global Buyers Mission. For learning accreditations, complete the brief quiz linked below this video. Now to our topic. My name is Kelly Marcinou and I am with Panaboat International and uh, we're the original machine milled uh, uh, Western Red Cedar log home package. Um, so we've been around since 1948. Uh, we majority of our, our manufacturing is done in British Columbia, um, though if you get wood framed windows they are probably coming from Manitoba, uh, low is our supplier for those. Um, but all of the other components to the lockup stage are, are done right here in British Columbia and a, a lot of focus on uh, wood. Uh, with including all the bits of trim and, and pieces in between that uh, are part of the overall kit. Um, today's topic specifically is on rapid resort. So how do you quickly design, engineer, uh, manufacture, and assemble in a resort uh, to get to revenue faster uh, with it? So um, we'll be talking about eye-catching and durable prefab solid wood building systems as, as basically the answer uh, to, to making rap rapid resorts. Um, most of the imagery I'll be showing today is from resort projects Panaboat has done. Um, this beautiful one up north is in the Yukon. It's a fly-in uh, wilderness retreat, and they have a number of Panaboats that they've been adding over the years uh, to this location. The main learning objectives today, so we're going to talk about just material and design trends um, and utilizing custom prefabrication to go through that design, manufacturing, and assembly. Um, what are different building systems, building packages, what's included, what are different options with, related to logs. Um, so we'll talk, uh, you know, overview of that. And then why Western Red Cedar is really that material of choice uh, for both appearance as well as performance there. And, and I will touch on a few other wood species as well, but um, that'll be definitely the, the focus. Um, and just a quick one, Isabella, I saw that you joined here. If you are collecting points through BC, um, would uh, just throw your uh, name as well as your AIBC uh, numbers into the chat and I'll record those um, and pass them along for you. So solid wood design trends. So uh, a year and a bit ago, the Architect Institute of America, uh, they actually do regular surveys of their members, but um, this one was talking about the built environment and, and what are the top trends that they're seeing. Um, and so a number of, of the, the top trends all relate to, you know, wood as, as being a, a material of choice. Um, so to, wood and timber specifically called out, but sustainable materials, having a low carbon footprint, um, you know, using reused or recycled materials is, is also quite big um, in, in the wood industry. Um, and then also of interest is prefabrication. So prefabrication, I think, is, is you know, a bit, a bit of a hot uh, topic um, in the number of advances that we can do related to manufacturing. Um, but it also works with log systems. So um, we've been doing prefabrication for 73 years. Um, it's now in the last, you know, 10, 15 years that it's, it's kind of taken off in, in other areas, but uh, a lot of the, the log buildings um, were prefabricated off site and then brought over um, as just the way of, of how we've done it. Uh, so one of the, the, the trends is low carbon. So as I was talking about at the beginning there. And um, so, you know, if you're not already kind of aware, so your low carbon often talks about is being the low embodied carbon. So how much energy and carbon is, is emitted during the various processing stages, everything from transport um, to building, as well as at end of life, what happens to it. The other, so wood structures generally have lower embodied carbon um, in the amount of processing that they have to, to incur. Another neat thing about wood is it actually sequesters carbon, so holds it in the product, both when the forests are growing, and then because buildings are a long life wood product, it continues to hold that carbon until the, the product eventually burns or, or decomposes with it. Um, so that's why you see that importance of long life wood products um, in this kind of discussion about, um, you know, how much carbon is, is being emitted or it's in the atmosphere. So things like buildings, infrastructure, furniture, um, as compared to, you know, disposable masks and toilet paper where they get, um, you know, used up and uh, burn or composted, you know, much quicker. Next one is on um, biophilic design uh, as being a top trend there. Um, so a fair bit of research on uh, overall wellness uh, that people have when they are exposed to nature and natural elements. 
Um, and this also includes not just feeling good, but uh, lower heart rate, uh, lower breathing rate, as well as things like your sweat, how it you know changes. So there, there's some neat stuff that, that's going out there. Um, a number of different things kind of come within biophilic design, but one of the big ones is having exposed uh, wood. And uh, so obviously if you're using a, a log structure, your walls are gonna be wood. Often you're gonna see exposed, you know, for like in this building here, exposed beamwork, uh, that's wood. Uh, a lot of the doors, windows, other trim materials will be wood. And uh, in many cases, people often, you know, do wood flooring, wood furniture uh, as part of that. Um, another big thing is daylight. So, you know, some people have a, an imagination that log buildings and cabins are, you know, dark and, and low ceilings and, you know, there's not much daylight going on there, but there's a lot of changes in design. So um, everything from adding light tunnels and skylights um, to, you know, you can see in this case where, you know, this, um, this is a project we're doing down in the Dominican Republic. And they're using framing up on the second story there so they can add these larger windows um, to really take in that, that beautiful view uh, with it. So definitely work with your, your designer um, in what are the various elements that they can bring in uh, related to biophilic design. And then the last one I'll mention as sort of a top trend uh, related to wood is science and engineering. So, uh, it, you know, lots is happening right now in increased spans, increased heights, um, as well as different solutions in the building code related to fire and water protection. Um, and British Columbia is a leader in this. So we have two universities, both UBC as well as UNBC, um, that have you know, well-regarded programs, both on wood science and wood engineering. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're unsure if you can use wood in a product, um, you know, I do encourage you to kind of reach out and sort of see, you know, what uh, material options may be available and some of the neat things that are happening with wood. Okay, so the next thing I'll talk about is custom prefabrication. So, um, you know, let's go through the, the various stages of that design, the manufacturing, and eventually the, the assembly. Um, and I'll just stop this one, uh, this project here, uh, it hasn't been built yet, but we're working in the Maldives on this one. It's a guest house. So, um, you know, central sort of gathering area, but six separate units um, that uh, you know, can be rented out. And then the bottom right hand corner is the, the interior uh, of that project. Um, so with prefabrication is you're typically going to have more work up front uh, that's done. Um, so fairly easy for us to make changes on the computer and on paper, much more challenging once you're in manufacturing or on the build site um, to make those changes because all the logs are going to be pre cut they're going to be notched to size, you know openings for windows doors archways will have been done. Um, so it's it's behooves you to, to have all that work up front um, and rather than relying on change orders or, or adjustments uh, later on. One of the big advantages though of that is you have a very realistic um, view of what the project's gonna look like at the end. Um, so creating marketing materials for investors or pre-sales or pre-rentals um, is certainly possible um, with the quality and quantity of materials that, that come out just right in the design phase of the project. Um, related to prefabrication, so uh, some prefabrication keeps their costs down because they use modular. So it's set standard sizes and very little room to actually change those or, or move them. You can do different configurations, but it's kind of a set size um, versus custom prefabrication in the case of Panabot, as well as other log um, manufacturers. Often we can be very precise in how uh, the sizing that we do. So if you're wanting to maximize any rules uh, coming from bylaws, building codes, community requirements, um, you know, encroachment on neighbors and so forth, uh, we, can, we can do that, um, including, you know, I'm uh, working on a project right now over on one of the islands and they had a maximum square footage and we got it down like exactly to it by, you know, bumping the walls out um, just to get that. So the client is quite pleased that they will have as large of a footprint as, as they're able to um, and not have any kind of, you know, leftover uh, that they're not utilizing. Next one, um, just a quick plug for our design guide that, uh, you know, there is, even though yes, we're custom, um, there is obviously some, you know, guidelines on, on what's acceptable and, and available um, in sort of a, a range of materials. 
Um, so we developed a design guide specifically for architects and uh, designers to come up with their own designs using the Panable building system and materials. So I'm happy to work with you on projects that you, you're wanting to do. Um, we do have our own in-house, you know, architects and, and designers, but, um, you know, you can come with us and we can go back and forth and work on a pro project directly as well. So we talked about design and now we're into manufacturing. So uh, you know, modern factories, so, you know, high quality control, fast speed, um, you know, so some of the, the advantages that uh, you see with other prefabrication systems, you're going to see in, in logs as well. Um, a neat thing about uh, prefab is that off-site production. So instead of having to have a large construction site, um, you can actually minimize, minimize the amount of space in construction, um, as well as noise, waste, dust, um, all these things that may be uh, a particular challenge for resorts where, you know, if they're doing an expansion, there could be active guests that are there. Um, it could be that there's flora and fauna and, and neighbors that they're needing to um, uh, reduce the impact on. So a number of things where having that offsite production can be an advantage, not just in the speed, but other things related to that and, and having a good experience at the resort property. Um, and then so for some of the resorts that are, are remote, um, reducing the amount of materials that you're hauling in and then eventually, you know, waste product that you're having to haul out can be a huge advantage and a big cost savings as well, um, especially in your, you know, that one I showed at the beginning up in, in Whitehorse, it's all helicopter dropped in. Um, and so, yeah, if you're paying for materials and then having to haul them out, that's uh, yeah, a lot of extra fuel and, and helicopter time uh, to do that. Uh, on the speed side is, is parallel processes uh, is another big advantage uh, with that. So, um, you know, your builder locally is going to be doing foundation, utilities, site prep um, at the same time as the manufacturing is going on. And so instead of waiting for one to, to um, start until the other one's finished, you're running them at the same time. And then when uh, the product ships to, to site is you're able to start, you know, with a subfloor and, and working your way up quite quickly um, and to get a, a full structure um, being able to ready to be used. Um, and just one comment on uh, handcrafted or, or locally sourced items, um, lots of flexibility on that as well. So if there's either requirements uh, related to uh, local content um, or wanting to involve the community or just aesthetic as well of having um, you know like local carvings incorporated into the product and, and building um, that's certainly something that we can talk about and there's some that are definitely um, I'd say more uh, you know like posts and and doors and there's some that that definitely really kind of appeal to that where you know they can be that those show key uh, showcase items uh, in the overall project so even though I'm talking lots about offsite production and, and machines and, and modern factories and stuff, that we can still have that hand uh, element uh, in as well. And then we get into the assembly stage. So I know I keep talking about prefab and how much faster it is, but um, you know, one thing I, th I think just to, to highlight on that, um, in a lot of resort and, and remote locations is labor availability is, is a challenge. Um, so not only is there a reduced uh, general labor requirement um, on the products, there's also a reduction of the skilled labor that's required. So um, instead of needing you know, a whole bunch of different carpenters um, with it, maybe you just have one or two specialists on, on trickier items, um, but because everything's pre-cut, you know, pre-sanded and so forth, you're able to have less labor and you know, a lower skilled level of labor uh, on that site. And then I think particularly important for uh, resorts that we're finding is that consistent look and level of performance between all the different buildings, especially if there's different um, uh, phases to the project where you know they're being done over a number of years, is that by going with one supplier, you're able to get a consistent look between all the different buildings, um, which definitely adds to the, the resort uh, guest experience that they know they're on the same property. Everything kind of has the same similar, you know, color scheme and, and material choice without it, with within it. And then there's a lot of flexibility here. The example I'm showing uh, on the screen now is also a project in the Maldives, um, and it's a restaurant and kind of a, a party space um, on the resort. Um, and then there are um, uh, residential like. Um, accommodations all have a similar, smaller scale, but uh, a similar look to them. Okay, so maybe I'll, I'll stop, pause for just a second if anybody has any questions um, before I start talking about sort of systems and packages and, and what's included. OK, 
Okay, hearing nothing, I'm gonna keep going here. <clears throat> so package contents, um, you probably hear different terms there when you talk to different log and building suppliers about what's, what's included and at what stage they kind of get involved in. Um, so sort of the first common one you might hear is the shell stage. Um, so typically there's a foundation already laid and then they're gonna be coming in and doing your subfloor and walls uh, or sometimes just your walls. Um, that'll be the, the log structure, structures. And they may or may not include a roof in the shell stage. Um, you know, typically if you're gonna be doing timber frame, you're gonna have roof as part of you know, their overall look to it. Um, but some, some won't, it'll, it'll be sort of something that's done separately. So do ask what's included. Um, and if you are getting everything shipped to a set location, see if they have other partners that they're able to work with. Um, I know often we talk about you know, Team BC or Team Canada, and uh, you know, there may be others that can you know, coordinate on a shipment uh, to send down as a, as a product. Uh, next one you're gonna hear about is the lockup stage of construction. So it includes everything you know, above, um, but you'll also include your fenestration, so your windows, your doors, skylights. Um, it'll typically include your interior walls and, and potentially your doors as well. And then um, the next one is gonna be your fit out stage. Your fit out stage starts to include all the things that are, um, you know, trim pieces, uh, you know, little details and so forth that they'll be going around as well as utilities. Um, uh, just a pause on utilities for a moment because uh, depending on how the log structure is done, um, utilities may be done as you're actually assembling the walls. Um, most of them don't have them pre-cut there, um, you know, in the walls already uh, or in the logs as you go. So do ask how that, that's run and uh, what are the options for that uh, for them. And then you have your turnkey. Uh, and so that'll include all your finishing. So um, some of the, the log builders will you know, do full turnkey projects, um, but a lot that are just supplying don't include finishing like cabinets and counters and flooring and so forth. Um, but definitely BC Wood has, has a number of different uh, you know, members that, that do do those other products. Um, so I think the biggest thing, takeaway about you get out of this is just ask what's included. Make sure that you are comparing apples to apples um, when you're going with different suppliers uh, through this because some of these terms are slightly different about what's included and sometimes there's a little overlaps. Um, I know for Panabode, we say we include all the materials to the lockup stage, um, but we actually include a lot of trim um, with it as well. Actually, almost all the trim that you're going to need for the structure. So we start to dip a little bit into the fit out stage um, but you know we're firmly on in the lockup stage of, of materials that we provide. Um, similar to package contents, services that can be different. Um, so site visits, whether you know they're included or or not, um, or you know doing virtual ones now via video, um, any kind of permit support uh, that's included, whether that's construction drawings, reports. Schedule Bs from engineers, um, you know, BC and a number of locations have energy efficiency requirements, um, you know, 3D color models and, and imagery that can be used in, in marketing. Uh, what's going on with shipping and logistics? Uh, so, you know, where, you know, are they able to support, um, you know, getting it there, any sort of carriers that they have, as well as what type of, um, what are they doing for packaging uh, that can support that? And then we go into assembly, if, if that's sort of included or not, and then stain choices. Um, so some cases that uh, log suppliers are actually doing pre-stains uh, on site and, or in advance, and then others will do it as it's being built, or that's kind of a separate service uh, later on. Um, this is just an example of a project that we did up in Haida Gwaii, so um, along the British Columbia coast as you're heading north. And uh, it's a fairly large structure. You can kind of see it uh, down here in the trees. And uh, you can see all the package, all materials arrived and, and as they're working on the log stage here and stacking the logs. Um, this building is actually two story of logs and uh, then you can see them putting on the roof um, before they're, you know, uh, example, the final uh, look at the structure afterwards. Uh, talk to your uh, supplier about different log profiles that are available. So some of them just specialize in, in one, maybe two, um, but uh, these are some of the common ones that you'll see there. So um, related to you know, some of the round logs uh, that you have, D logs, I kind of call your compromise logs. You got round on one side and you got uh, flat on the other side. And then you have your square or rectangular log where it's gonna be that flat um, on both sides. 
and then are handcrafted. Um, and so a number of the log uh, suppliers do a handcrafted log. Some of them, you know, in this example where there's going to be different diameter logs, other times they're all going to be the same uh, size that, that they have uh, along, as well as some interesting ends and, and different pieces that you can include in there. Next one is going to be uh, different building systems, so different ways of actually connecting the logs together um, with it. So, um, you know, button pass and saddle, saddle notch often just use gravity to hold them or hardware to hold it together. Uh, corner post, you know, there's going to be the post will be cut through there. There'll be notches um, in the case uh, with them. And then, um, sorry, my computer. And then you're going to have a corner post and then um, your dovetail is, is your next one where there actually is going to be um, a flared out end to it. And you're actually going to have, um, it's you know quite challenging for it, for it to pull apart. And then your true interlocking where not only is the notches cut out, um, but you're going to have that, that thicker end. So if you're trying to pull it apart, you're really just going to be taking one log after, after another and um, pulling it apart. Yeah, talking a little bit about the Panabo building system. Um, I think I covered most of this there. So we do a machine milled, um, you know, that solid Western red cedar and, and a doubled tongue and groove is our, is our profile. Okay, and so there's just the last topic um, I was gonna talk about is Western red cedar. Um, any questions on profiles, log building systems, packages at all? Kelly, it's um, it's Brian Harish. Um, hi, yeah. Hi, are, are you, uh, and and maybe uh, um, it, you're you're yet to address it, but are you um, having to look at uh, different profiles or log sizes to adapt to um, uh, step code um, and energy efficiency uh, uh, requirements? Yeah. So. Panabode, um, we're not going to be doing a, do, a new log size. Um, we have done a fair bit of research about finding kind of the right sweet spot of a size um, yeah. that gives us that free apart center in a log um, so we can get that yeah, nice grain all the way through uh, for it. So for us, probably not. Um, ways that we're adjusting to step code are related to, you know, we're, we're already doing the performance pathway in the BC building code, so 9.36.5. And uh, so we would do increased roof insulation, high performance windows, and we'll have another, you know, other things to, to model the overall home. Yeah. And then the, um, for some of the later steps, um, looking at it, like, and, and we're already doing this, I can say um, really cold climates, like some of our Northern Ontario builds that we do, um, they'll do an inner liner package. And so they'll put in a, like, a, like an inner framed wall and then insulation, and then we have Panabo siding that um, we provide that matches our log profile. And so then you can kind of hide it there. Sometimes it's only the north wall, or you know, if a, a wall gets a lot of wind, um, sometimes our modeler, you know, only specifies it in certain locations. But that's kind of our, yeah, our workaround uh, on that at this point. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, and happy to talk to you more about that. I, the BC Log and Timber. Uh, industry association talk I'm doing um, at 2.30 is specifically about energy efficiency and step code uh, for log ah. structures. So um, Wonderful. Thank take, you. take my Panabot hat off and, and put on my log and timber association hat uh, for that one. Um, but just on that point, so Western Red Cedar is, is, has a bunch of advantages related to, um, you know, it has the highest R value um, of those woods. So um, I think I actually have um, a little chart coming up that talks about um, our values of different wood species. So, um, so Western red cedar, natural material, and, and maybe just because we're talking about uh, resorts, I'll just say that uh, with Stepco, that's something that's obviously here in British Columbia, um, but we are hearing from a number of jurisdictions and builders that they're often looking at BC to see well, what's BC doing and, and being a bit of a leader on that. Um, so obviously we're keen, you know, whatever's happening here in British Columbia might be carried on and in, in, into other regions as well. So going back to uh, natural materials um, with that, so log structures do have um, natural and expected movement um, that's going to occur. Um, typically this is called related to settling. So your logs, um, 
you know, whether they're machine milled or, or handcrafted, usually there's going to be still a little bit of, of shrinkage that occurs, even if they were kiln dried or air dried, um, which, you know, they'll, they'll be one or generally one or the one or the other um, to get it down to a, a moisture content for us to work with. Um, but, uh, you know, within the first sort of year or two, there's going to be some settling. And then even if you're in a location where the humidity is quite different from one season to the next, you can get this uh, settling that can still occur. And so our, our whole entire structure is meant to move. Um, so you may get some creaks and groans uh, that'll occur, as well as some different detailing um, that's gonna be there to accommodate that, that, that movement. Uh, related to color changes, uh, so cedar will do that naturally sort of silvery gray um, that'll, that'll occur. Um, some people love that, that look. Uh, you'll see that especially in decks and, and um, fences. Um, others do want to keep that sort of the, the coppery, pinky, you know, colors that you'll get with cedar. And so there is a, a number of stain and, and clear coat products that can be used for that. Um, I'll mention scent. Uh, you know, cedar definitely does have a distinct aroma. Um, you know, Panabode has these uh, sl slices that we can provide you. So you and your client. Um, you can smell them, you can feel them. Um, and so, you know, if they're not familiar with cedar, um, you know, I think that's a good sort of practice step to sort of take and make sure that this is something that, you know, they're gonna enjoy. Um, and then pests and rot, rot mildew decay. Um, so cedar is naturally resistant to those. So this is why it's such a um, desired material, um, not just here in British Columbia, but, but worldwide. And I'm just gonna go back to the map here. And you can see um, all this green is where the, the cedar typically grows. And uh, you know, if you, you've been in this area, you know that uh, a lot of that is really wet uh, environment. So just through evolution, the cedar ha has evolved to be naturally resistant um, to very wet conditions, which you know, a lot of other woods um, are very gonna quickly de degrade. Uh, talked mostly about cedar, but um, you know pine and fir are also commonly used um, wood species. And Canadian Wood Council has a great uh, tool that you can kind of go on, and they have all different species listed and you know, properties about appearance and performance. And then here's specifically about thermal performance. Um, so going back to that question on energy efficiency, um, so ICC 400 is typically the table people will reference um, about R values per inch for different species. Um, but the BC Log and Timber Building Ind Industry Association did engage in, in a new study with Natural Resources Canada looking at uh, cedar as well as dug fir and a couple different sizes of logs and doing new research on what's their R value in cold weather climates. Um, and so typically finding anywhere from 20 to 40 percent better um, than when was given credit for it before. So um, these results are available for licensing. So especially if you're working in a project um, that you're very close on energy efficiency target and maybe need a little bit, you know, two to six percent better, that's where this can definitely come into play and make that difference with no additional cost to construction, no additional materials just by using different calculations um, that are approved by Natural Resources Canada. And then I'm just going to wrap up uh, and finish on care and maintenance um, related to this. So, um, you know, as you can kind of manage, ma imagine here, cedar, you know, has a number of these properties um, that are going to make it easier to, to keep clean and maintain. Um, but one thing to I, a, a couple other points. So um, style of log that you choose can have an impact on, on your cleaning schedule. So something that's round or rustic. Um, there's going to be a little bit more of edges and, and um, bumps there that could debris, dust, leaves, various things that can be um, on it. Uh, so going with a square log is often going to be a bit easier to maintain overall. Um, related to staining, usually people think of staining on the outside. Um, on the inside, you may want to have a protective coat on the, the wood for um, bathrooms and kitchens, of course, for, for, you know, there's grease and water there, but also think about where our hands and our hair is going to be touching. And um, you'll have this because there's natural oils in, in our hair and skin. And so they can actually start to darken the wood over time. So along hallways, light switches, bedrooms, there, there's some other areas that you might want to also think about protecting, um, even just with a clear coat um, on the wood. Um, talk about seizing, self-tightening through bolts is, is another thing, especially if you're in a resort and you're maybe not going to be there uh, on a regular basis. Um, having something that can adjust based on the, the shrinkage that's occurring 
rather than having to you know manually every month go in and check the, the wing nuts. So um, looking for those self-tightening bolts can make a difference. And then just ask your supplier about windows, doors, roof, foundation, if there's anything similar um, or different that needs to be done in maintenance. Um, often they're gonna be similar parts that you're getting elsewhere. Um, however, that there may be some slight differences based on the building system. So, you know, windows and doors actually float um, in there and, and a few different things are, are different about the casing. Okay, so I'll wrap that up um, right there. I think we're just right on at two o'clock. Um, happy to, to answer any questions or, or discuss later on uh, as well that uh, people may have. Perfect, Isabella, and I got your uh, note there as well, so I have that. You're welcome, Kelly. Hmm.